media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report, providing Capital Growth Fund attack with a 15-year project pipeline. The Waterfall City mixed-use development in Midrand has attracted a suite of corporates looking to consolidate their satellite centers into a single Gauteng foothold. Engineering News' Natalie Grieve recently explored the developing 2,200-hectare estate to chart its progress. Raising the corporate profile of the Waterfall City mega development, companies such as MassMart, PwC, Novartis, Honda, CellC, Group 5, Premier Foods and Servest have already committed to establishing or have already established head offices within the estate. Attack CEO Mornay Wilkin told journalists during a recent tour of the property that the fund aimed to develop an integrated mixed-use development rather than encourage the construction of an independent, standalone business headquarters. A big advantage we are realising with Waterfall specifically is quite center, central in terms of Gauteng where a lot of corporates are consolidating in Waterfall. And we have seen corporates like Group 5, PwC, which have uh, consolidated their offices in Waterfall. And that's something that is very unique, even in the difficult market conditions where corporates are struggling in terms of businesses and how to bring operational costs down. And they're sitting in eight, seven buildings you potentially can consolidate. And given the central location, it makes it a unique offering in terms of Waterfall. According to Wilkin, companies relocating to the development cited its high visibility, central location, infrastructure and advanced architecture as key drivers of their decision. Others pointed to the development's location, which they felt provided a convenient springboard between Gauteng Metropoles Johannesburg and Pretoria, as well as the existence of the free-flowing Allendale off-ramp of the N1 highway, which mitigated traffic congestion challenges seen around other mixed-use developments. We have got a free-flowing interchange and that's operating compared to our competitors that don't have it at this point in time. What we're also busy with is to take some traffic, even further traffic away from Allendale is we're building a bridge parallel with Allendale and that's under construction and that will be opened with the completion of the mall. Waterfall City would be anchored by the 131,000 square metre Mall of Africa, which was due to open in April next year. Other news making headlines this week. President Jacob Zuma says legislative changes will be supportive of offshore oil and gas drilling. The Southern African Institute of Steel Construction says the protection of locally produced structural steel is paramount. And South Africa's Chamber of Mines says mining Pakisa can help unlock mining and exploration investment. President Jacob Zuma says the finalization of the Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Act Amendment Bill will assist the country to accelerate offshore oil and gas exploration. The aspiration of the offshore oil and gas exploration focus group of the oceans Pakisa is the drilling of 30 exploration wells in 10 years. In their view, this would produce 370,000 barrels of oil and gas per day. If this is achieved, it would mean the creation of up to 130,000 jobs with an annual contribution to the GDP of 2.2 billion US dollars while reducing the dependence on oil and gas imports during the production phase. Steel construction industry body, the Southern African Institute of Steel Construction, says that local designation is the industry's most effective tool when protecting the local steel construction industry against imported fabricated structural steel. I think the initiative by the Minister of Trade and Industry in his recent IPAP to designate fabricated structural steel, conveyance tubing and power line hardware is in fact a very good step. He was very concerned about compliance and so are we. We believe there are some specific steps that can be taken to help to uh, identify what comes in and to then either pay import duty properly, get proper statistics and in the process 
discourage people to actually buy from South Africa. Mm -hmm. If it's designated, of course, the government organizations like Eskom and Transnet and other uh, provincial authorities and so forth have to buy local content. That was the, that's what designation means. Uh, and uh, we believe that that, in fact, is a major step forward, provided there's proper compliance. The Chamber of Mines has expressed optimism that the upcoming Mining Pakisa Laboratory, scheduled for October, will enable South African mining stakeholders to begin tackling prevailing impediments to mining and exploration investment and address issues undermining the competitiveness of the sector. Part of the Mining Pakisa process, we continue to implement a comprehensive stakeholder consultation process with government, departments, the private sector, and labor. The actual mining Pakisa laboratory will begin in October 2015. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.